Good morning, Hyattsville Baptist Church. Sounds like you're glad to be here today. That's a good thing. My name is Steve Hall, and uh, I'm here to worship with you and invite you to sing uh, one of the great worship songs of the last several years. Let's stand and sing How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. He is the name above all names, worthy of our praise. My heart will sing how great. to thee how great thou art how great thou art amen thank you, you may be seated
John chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. And verse 14 says that the Word, our Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Isn't it wonderful that the Word became flesh and dwelt among men? Amen. Amen. Let's pray and go to the Lord this morning. Father God, we, we come today excited that the Word became flesh. That our God is not a distant God. Our God is not a God that does not know about our problems. You are not far from us. You have dwelt among us. And you are with us today. I pray, Lord, that as we worship you this morning, that we would draw closer to you as you have drawn close to us. That this would be a time that is focused primarily on coming to you, worshiping you, lifting you high, and not on our own distractions. I pray, Lord, that our hearts would be focused and centered on you this morning. We thank you for the good gift that is Jesus and the relationship that we have with him and the opportunity we now have to worship as his body. May we do it to glorify you today. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, what up? <laughs> Just trying to keep you on your toes, you know. <laughs> Good to see y'all here this morning. For those who are not acquainted, my name is Brian. I'm pastor around here at Heightsville Baptist Church. And just so you know, this is not Dan. <laughs> Dan, our worship minister, is on vacation this week. We, uh, he is going and getting some much-needed R&R, and so we've got Brother Steve Hall here with us. Came all the way from Somerset today to lead us in worship, so we're excited to have him here leading us in the singing as we continue this morning. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that if you're a guest here, we are delighted to have you with us. Uh, we've got a little connection card attached to our bulletin. If you want to fill that out, drop it in the offering boxes on the way out the door. That'd be our way to connect with you. If you're joining us through the radio or on Facebook Live, good morning and hello to you as well. Uh, we've got a couple ways you can connect. You can either hop in the chat at Facebook and talk with our virtual greeter or you can go to HighSchoolBaptistChurch.com, go to the Connect tab, fill that out, and send it to us. That'll be a form uh, that'll, that'll help us get in touch with you this week. Uh, we also have kids' bulletins available. We like to say that we believe in free-range families around here. And so, parents, if you need to get up, roam around, if the kids need a breath of fresh air, just head on out, do whatever you got to do. We've got kids' bulletins for two different ages with crayons available in the main lobby over there at the information desk. So... We're going to keep on worshiping. I'm excited about what God is going to do here today. We're wrapping up our summer series today in Psalms. We've been going through songs of summer, and so I'm excited to preach that. But before we do, let's get to the Lord and worship through song a little bit more. Brother Steve. Amen. I'm glad to have my wife, Claudia, with me. And uh, we are members at Beacon Hill Baptist Church, in case you're wondering uh, about that. Uh, I served on staff at High Street Baptist Church for 23 years before I retired and we are now members at Beacon Hill if you know any folks in Somerset. We're going to sing one of the great hymns of the church. We already sang the chorus, How Great Thou Art, but uh, as we do that let me just share with you, of course, for many people you cannot sing How Great Thou Art without the remembering George Beverly Shea, uh, who probably sang that hundreds of times over the years with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Crusade. And when we were in seminary, which has been a few years ago, <laughs> I know you can tell that, um, had the opportunity to meet George Beverly Shea very briefly. My wife worked uh, in the registrar's office and they were responsible for graduations and uh, George Beverly Shea was there for that graduation one December, and I got to shake hands with him, 
thank him for the ministry that he had had in my life and so many others over the years. And I'm going to tell you this, he had the biggest hands I have ever shaken in my life. But uh, God certainly used him and has used this song. So let's stand together. We're going to sing three stanzas and choruses, How Great Thou Art. My God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul you be seated here and we'll sing another more uh, contemporary song. Uh, this particular song all the way back to 1981 was one of the first widely used uh, praise songs as we now have come to call them written by Jack Hayford who was a pastor in California has since uh, passed away and gone on to be with the Lord. But certainly this song has been used around the world to praise the Lord. And let's share it together this morning. Majesty, worship His majesty unto Jesus. 
be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His Majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Majesty, worship His Majesty. Jesus, be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. Exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His Majesty. King of all kings, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Amen. Thank you.
for us. Uh, I appreciate that the lamb has stepped aside and allowed Joe Dirt to be the lead singer today. Uh, between Joe Dirt and Racetrack Grover, that might be my favorite two backups for the lamb. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, that's right. We do have some new puppeteers out there joining in on it. So excited to see y'all get up there and, and lead us. And with that, kiddos, you all are dismissed to go to Children's Church if you are in grade two or below. As the kids head out to Children's Church, a couple things just to keep on your radar. First of all, tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll be having prayer meeting right here in this room. Uh, we'll open up, continuing our flyover series. It's been a little while since we've done a flyover. Uh, we're going to be seeing the book of Colossians from way up above. Just fly through those four chapters tonight, and then we will spend the rest of our time together in prayer. Deacons, remember, we got deacons meeting following that immediately thereafter this evening. Also, you may have received earlier today a little packet with 80 questions on it, and that may or may not have been terrifying for you. Let me explain. The nominating team this year is taking a little different approach as we look to fill different positions and ministries here in our church. Rather than just going up to randos and be like, hey, what are you doing? Nothing cool. Let's do this. We're going to come at it a little differently. God has given each of us spiritual gifts for the building up of this church. I talk almost every week at some point about how there's something God has for you to do serving this church, being a minister in some capacity. Well, your spiritual gifts are key to that. The Spirit of God, if you're a believer, dwells within you and gifts you supernaturally to serve this body in some way, shape, or form. And it may not look like what you've ever thought of as service. That's okay. So we've got a little 80 question survey. It honestly shouldn't take you more than about 15 minutes. If you're taking longer than that, you're probably overthinking it. Just go with your gut, fill it out. If you did it already today, thank you. We'll be tabulating your results and getting that back to you here in the next week or so. Uh, if you have not, please stop by the information desk on the way out the door. Jonathan Gaffney will be back there and he will answer any and all questions you have related to spiritual gifts. If you want to ask him about speaking in tongues or anything along those lines, Jonathan is ready for those questions. Just go right ahead and, and ask him about them. Uh, in all seriousness, we would like each and every member of this church, whether or not you think you can serve this church or not. If you're a member of this church, then you should be a Christian. And if you're a Christian, you have spiritual gifts. We need to identify those and see how you can be helping this church achieve what God wants us to achieve. Also helping us do that, I'm excited to not, uh, today to announce the launch of our partnership with Right Now Media. They're sort of like the Netflix of Bible studies. There is over 20,000 videos in this special streaming service that we now have a partnership with as a church, uh, ranging from thousands of kids shows like Veggie Tales and Bible Man and things like that up through Bible studies for every kind of demographic that you can come up with. And it is now going to be available to you free of charge as a gift from this church to help you grow in your walk with Jesus. All you need to do is get that connection card on your uh, bulletin, or if you're online listening, send us a message with your email address. Please don't put that in the comments. You probably don't want the emails you'll get when people are going through there and grabbing your email address, but send it to us in a message. And uh, we will get you signed up for that. You'll get an invite email this week that will help you get plugged in to this. Again, it's a streaming service, kind of like Netflix, except it is focused on helping you grow as a disciple of Jesus. We would love to see every member of the church utilizing this. It is of no charge to you, so please use it, grow through it, and uh, hopefully it'll draw you closer to Jesus. It's available through Android, Chromecast, iPhone, iPhone, Pad, every Apple Store, anything, uh, Fire TV, and Roku. All of those have the Right Now Media app in them, and you can get started on that this week. One last thing. We have a new series starting up next week, Sunday morning called Hang In There. We're going to be spending four weeks in the book of Jude, looking at perseverance and remaining with the faith. 
It is oftentimes distracting. We have a world that is shouting for us to run from Jesus and run to whatever else is out there. We have an adversary who is working against us, trying to lead us away from Christ. And we've got our own selves, which we get in our own way often enough. And we're going to be looking at the book of Jude. It's a one-chapter book that is focused on helping the believer stay in the faith, to contend for the faith, as Jude puts it, to hang in there. And so if you're feeling the temptation to run away, or if you know of someone who maybe has been far from the Lord, this is the series for them. It's a four-week series starting next week. We hope that you'll be a part of that. Invite your friends, invite your family, and uh, if you want to prepare ahead of time, and I would recommend you do, read through the book of Jude this week. It's one chapter. It's about 25 verses. It'll take you under 10 minutes, and you will have an idea of where we're headed next Sunday. So I hope that you'll be excited for that. I believe you've got a song for us, right? I do. Come on up. Tell you what, folks, if your pastor gets as excited when he preaches as he does when he uses announcements, you need seat belts on those pews. I tell you, praise the Lord. The Psalms tell us over and over, God is the only one worthy of praise. God and God alone. God and God alone created all these things we call our own. From the mighty to the small, the glory in them all is God's and God's alone. God and God alone reveals the truth of all we call unknown. And all the best and worst of man can't change the master plan. It's God's and God's alone. God and God alone is fit to take the universe's throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest And God alone will be the joy of our eternal home. He will be our one desire. Our hearts will never tire of God and God alone. God and God alone. The universe's throne. Let everything that lives reserve its truest praise for God and God alone. God and God alone.
Thank you much, and it is in God and God alone that we praise. Amen? Well, it has been a difficult year plus some change. That's, it's almost cliche to point it out at this point, right? Like, if we look back over the last year or so, it has been crazy in a myriad of ways. Over and over and over again, it seems like the news is just going to give us something else to be panicked about in a way that's even unique for the general amount of news panic. And here we are again dealing with surging cases and coronavirus, the, the pandemic that will not go away. It could get easy to feel a little bit distressed, a little bit anxious, to get a little desperate. When will we see the end of this? When will we quit having to deal with conversations about social distancing and masks and vaccines and yada, yada, yada? When, when can we move on to normal chaos in the news instead of the overarching shadow of coronavirus? We all feel it. We all feel the, the desperation for a God who we believe to be all-powerful to act in a powerful way. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in this season of Songs of Summer, this volume two that we've done this summer, we have had a consistent theme of crying out to the Lord in our distress. I didn't plan it that way. Honestly, I was just like, hey, let's knock out some of the first ten psalms this year. Turns out the Lord had a plan for that. It's like our God is sovereign or something and knows what we need to be in His Word about. And so as we wrap up today in Psalm 119... What I want us to see, what I believe our main idea will be, is that desperation requires devotion. Desperation requires devotion. And I, I believe it is our lack of devotion to the Lord that ultimately leads to our desperation in our difficulties. It is our lack of devotion that leads to much of our desperation and our difficulties. You say, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean how would our lack of devotion lead to that? Well, here's three ways that we pursue God, that we are devoted to God, according to the author Jerry Bridges, and I think they're a helpful guide for us today. One is that we are devoted to God when we fear God, and when we fail to fear God, we ultimately sin, do we not? When you do not fear the Lord God, you don't care what His Word says, and so you do whatever you want. That leads to sin. What sin leads to is consequences for our actions. And you and I both know that much of the suffering and the desperation that we find ourselves in day to day comes back to our own sin, to our own mistakes, to our own rebellion. But even in those situations we don't cause, another aspect of devotion to God is a love for God. And when we fail to love God, God, we don't see His love in the situation. We don't see the grace that He's pouring out on us. We don't see the passion that He has for each and every one of us. And so what we do is we stay in our hurt. We stay upset. We stay concerned. And we ignore a God who is reaching out in love to carry us through. Not only do we fail to fear God and do we fail to love God, but we also fail to fail to even desire the Lord. And when we fail to desire our God, to want to be with Him, what we don't realize is how to even pursue Him. We get so tuned out of what we are called to do, which is to pursue our God and know Him more. We get so out of whack that we don't even know how to find Him, much less to build it up within ourselves to start it afresh. And so we stay wandering in the desert in desperate need of his revival, in desperate need of his safety, in desperate need of his love, and yet we do not find it. Well, I hope today that we will do just that through Psalm 119. So if you'll pray with me, we will then dive into this text. Father God, we are desperate. We cannot do this life by ourselves. We cannot live the Christian life. We cannot tackle 
the problems of this life. We cannot carry ourselves through this. We need you. Lord, your people are thirsty. And we know that you promised to give us living water. Your people are hungry. Lord, feed us and sustain us. I pray that this sermon today would be an encouragement to all of us who feel a little desperate from time to time. Be it of our own doing or just of the situation around us. That we would be devoted to you so that we may get through our desperation. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're in Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible. Don't worry, we're not going to do the whole thing today. You might have looked at it and been like, holy moly, we are not going to get to Mexican this afternoon. We're just going to go right into prayer meeting. That is not the case. We did, if you think back last year, we did verses 1 through 24 already. And my hope and prayer is that over the next seven or eight years, we'll knock out the rest of Psalm 119 a couple stanzas at a time. So we're only going to tackle three of them today. There's 22 sections to Psalm 119. If you look at the the third, fourth, and fifth one, they've got weird words in front of them like Gmail and Dalit and wow, or wall, or however you say that. I think it's wow, like Owen Wilson, but you know, whatever. These three stanzas are a part of a 22-part devotional written after the Jewish people had been in exile. They'd been sent off to Babylon at the end of our Old Testaments, and then they came back to an Israel that was depleted, that was weakened, that was not as it was beforehand. And when they came back, the psalmist, who we don't know their name, but the psalmist wrote Psalm 119 as a 22-part devotional to help the people of God come back to His Word so that they may find, through their suffering, through their sin, through their devotion, sustainability in this new Israel, in this new world, after the exile, and in their God. And so today we are going to start in verse 25, and we're going to go on down through verse 48. And our point number one in this first section is that we find revival in God's word alone. See, if you look at verses 25 through 32, the psalmist seeks revival. You can can hear the desperation in his voice, right? Look at verse 25. He says, my life is down in the dust. Give me life through your word. Can you imagine praying that prayer? Lord, my life is down in the dust. Maybe some of y'all feel that way this morning. He continues in verse 28 and says, I am weary or I weep from grief. Strengthen me through your word. He is desperately clinging to God's word as he battles whatever it is he's going through in this life. Knowing that he can only find revival in the Lord. That it is not in and of himself. And in fact he points out in verse 29 that revival does not come through the way of deceit. But rather through the way of of truth. Look at verse 29. It says, Keep me from the way of deceit and graciously give me your instruction. Keep me from the way of deceit. This world is constantly trying to deceive us and tell us this is the way. This is how you will find happiness. This is how you will get through this. There's been a proliferation over and over and over again throughout different media about how to survive the pandemic, right? Here's how all the TV shows to watch in quarantine. Here's all the books to read. Here's all the music to do. Here's the right breathing exercises. So that way you're not going to totally lose it going through the pandemic over and over and over again. We're inundated by the world about how to survive. And while all of those things in and of themselves are not bad, and I enjoy TV and some breathing exercises from time to time, ultimately... To think that those are the way in our desperation to get through it is to be deceived. Verse 30 points that out. I have chosen the way of truth. I have set your ordinances 
before me. The way of truth is the only way to get through this time. It's the only way to get through any time of desperation in our lives. It's not by going to what the world or the devil or our flesh would offer us, but only by going to the Word of God to be sustained in this life. And many of us here today are struggling, and we are hurting, and we are in the difficulty. But let me ask you, are you in the Word? Because the statistics say you're not. The stats point out that overwhelmingly American Christians do not read their Bible. That our lives are thrown down in the dust and yet we're not even sitting up to find comfort. Are you down in the dust? Do you need help to understand how to get through this? A couple recommendations. One, read something personally for you in the Bible. If you don't know where to start, and I understand, it's a big book, right? I would recommend go to one of the Gospels. Go to Matthew, go to Mark, go to Luke or John. These four books tell the life of Jesus. And if there is anywhere to find sustainability in this life, it's in the very words of Christ, in the life of Christ speaking into your life today. If you're wanting to be a little bit more poetic, the Psalms, where we've been all summer, also not a bad choice to feel your heart stirred in your difficulty. But read something personally in God's Word. Secondly, read the sermon text before I preach it and definitely read it after. The worst thing you can do as a believer is hear a preacher preach a passage, close your Bible, and then never look at it again and be like, well, I know the definitive answer on that. Nah, I could be lying to you. I don't think I am. I don't plan to. But test me. Look in the Word and make sure it says what I said it said. And if it ain't, holla at you, boy, and we'll talk it through. Go home today. Read Psalm 119, 25 through 48. Make sure that it says what I said it said. We are called to be people of the word, not people who hear someone be of the word. I already told you, we're spending the next four weeks in Jude. It's one chapter for four weeks. You could read the whole thing every week. Before and after the sermon. And you will get far more out of this next sermon series than you have ever gotten out of another sermon series in your life. I can almost guarantee it. Not because of anything I said, but because you yourself were in the word. God speaks to all of his people through his word. Are you in it? Are you, as verse uh, 30, uh, I lost my spot, sorry. Are you 31? Are you clinging to? to it are you as the next verse says pursuing the way of his commands or are you letting it gather dust on the shelf your approach to the word of god will determine whether or not you have revival if you are feeling dry and dusty in your life let me ask you have you picked up the water number two We not only find revival in God's word, we also find safety in God's word alone. The psalmist also understands not just that he needs God's word for revival, he also needs it, as verse 33 through 40 point out, to avoid sin. Verse 36 and 37 really point this out. He says, turn my heart to your decrees and not to dishonest profit. Turn my eyes from looking at what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Why does he want to avoid sin? Because he wants to avoid punishment. Verse 39, turn away the disgrace I dread. Let me tell you real quick and in a hurry, the fear of God. We kind of neuter God sometimes, cut his legs out from under him. And we're like, the fear of God, it's, it's reverential awe. It's like looking at the Grand Canyon or a sunrise. And there's, there's an element of truth to that, but the fear of God also includes a dread of discipline and wrath. The fear of God includes a dread of discipline and wrath. Wrath, if you are not in Christ, that is due you for your sins. Discipline, if you're in Christ, to get you back in line and in holiness. We 
sometimes treat God like the abominable snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Y'all know I love that movie. Yukon Cornelius comes rolling up in there, going to tackle the abominable snowman of the north with his weird mustache and his hat. Y'all know. And the big, scary, abominable snowman with his teeth that are this long are nah, 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 coming after the reindeers. And he's real scary until what? The dentist elf goes up in there and rips his teeth out. And then he's up here going, arr, arr, arr. if y'all have seen the movie, you know what I'm doing. We sometimes treat God like he's the abominable snowman and we done ripped his teeth out. He's up there seeing us in our sin. Can't do anything about it. No, our God has teeth. Our God has bite. And he is scary when it comes to sin. You should fear God. He cannot tolerate evil. He cannot tolerate sin. And how do you avoid the punishment that is due us? Don't sin. Obedience. Verse 34 says, help me understand your instruction and I will obey. I will follow it all of my life. Verse 35, he says, help me stay on the path of your commands for I take pleasure in it. How do you avoid the punishment and wrath of God? Don't earn it. Live righteously. Live holy. Live the way he's calling us to live passionately pursue it and turns out you won't find yourself being disciplined if i didn't want a whooping growing up what did i do i didn't do something to earn a whooping now that didn't always happen (laughs) obedience is easier said than done but we have to start somewhere and this all leads us to number three not only do we find safety not only do we find revival we also find love In God's word aloud. As the psalmist in verses 41 through 48 desires God and he's fearing God, we also see that he sees God's love. Verse 41 says, Let your faithful love come to me, Lord, your salvation as you promised. It says in verse 45, I walk freely in an open place because I study your precepts. There is salvation, there is freedom, there is love. In our God. He is both terrifying and overwhelmingly loving. Sometimes we like to act like God is one or the other. But as I was reading in my quiet time this morning, Exodus chapter 6 verse 3, the Lord is referred to both the God Almighty, the one who is all space mighty, powerful enough to handle whatever comes his way. But get this, he's also The Lord God, little tiny caps Lord, meaning Yahweh, meaning Jehovah, meaning He is a personal God. He is both. He is both a personal God who wants to know you individually, each and every one of us, while also the one who punishes and destroys sin. Our God is both. And unless we see Him as both, We will not truly be devoted to him. That love, that grace, that passion that comes from God that we see when we realize that he still loves us even though we're sinners, even though we should fear him, he gave us the grace and poured it out on us and still loves us. That should turn into love for him. And that love leads to boldness. Verse 45 and 46. He says, I will walk freely in an open place because I study your precepts. I will speak of your decrees before kings and not be ashamed. The love of God leads to boldness, leads to worship, and it leads to desire. Not only does it lead to boldness, it also leads to worship. Look at how the psalm ends where we're at today. Verse 47, 48. I will delight in your commands, which I love. I will lift up my hands to your commands, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. He loves the Lord. And that love for the Lord, coupled with the fear of the Lord, you know what that fuels? It fuels a desire for the Lord. Because as you fear Him, you want to live righteously. As you love Him, you want to pursue Him. And those two things lead to a desire 
for him, which is where we started, isn't it? It's cyclical. It feeds itself. If you're not being fed in the word, it's because you've got to start it. If you start, it will build. It is a holy habit that will grow in your life, but you have to start. And you have to understand that it's not all up to you anyway. Because at the end of the day, who is the greatest expression of the love of God? Is it not Jesus? At the end of the day, who is the answer to the fear of God? Is it not the Jesus who died on the cross and made all of us safe from the wrath of God by trusting in Him? What about the source of revival, of desire? Is it not Jesus? Y'all, get this. Jesus is the answer to all of it. Jesus is the answer to every prayer in the Psalms we've done this summer. Look back at Psalm 9, Psalm 10, Psalm 7, Psalm 6, Psalm 2. What is the answer to all of our problems? It's Jesus. And how do I know that? Because of the, the passage we read in John this morning. What we open with, we open with saying what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Because the Word came and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Word, and that means that Jesus is the answer to our desperation. He's the answer to our lack of devotion. He's the answer to desire, to fear, to love. And if you don't believe me, listen to the psalm. Replace the word with his name. My life is thrown down in the dust. Give me life through your Jesus. I told you about my life and you answered me. Teach me Jesus. Help me understand Jesus, so that I can meditate on your wonders. I am weary from grief. Strengthen me through Jesus. Keep me away from the way of deceit and graciously give me Jesus. I've chosen the way of Jesus. I've set Jesus before me. I cling to Jesus. Lord, do not put me to shame. I pursue Jesus for you broaden my understanding. You enlarge my heart. Teach me, Lord, the meaning of Jesus, and I will always keep him. Help me understand Jesus and I will obey him and follow him with all my heart. Help me stay on the path of Jesus where I take pleasure in him. Turn my heart to Jesus and not to dishonest prophet. Turn my eyes from what is looking at is worthless. Give me life in Jesus. Confirm what you said to your servant for it produces reverence for you. Turn away the disgrace I dread. Indeed, Jesus is good. How long, how I long for Jesus. Give me life through your righteousness. Let your faithful love come to me, Lord, your salvation as you promised. Where does that salvation come from? Verse 42, then I can answer the one who taunts me, for I trust in Jesus. Never take Jesus from me, for I hope in Jesus. I will always obey Jesus forever and ever. I walk freely in the open places because I study Jesus. I will speak of Jesus before the kings and I will not be ashamed. I delight in Jesus who I love. I will lift up my hands to Jesus who I love and I will meditate on Jesus. Jesus is the word and he is the answer to your desperation today. Desperation requires devotion. Are you devoted to the word? Let's pray. Father God, I I pray this morning, Lord, give us more of your word. Give us more Jesus. Lord, we are desperate. We cannot make it through this life on our own. We are weak. We need you. Lord, help us be more devoted to you. Show us through your word. Show us through Jesus that you are who we fear. You are who we love. You are who we desire. And lead us through this time. Lord, I pray for anyone today who does not know Jesus. Does not know the word. 
Lord, they are still in the dust. They are still far from you, and they are due your wrath. I pray, Lord, today that they would come to know you, to know the word, to cling to and pursue the word, to know the love and the grace of the word, that they may find salvation and freedom in Jesus today. I pray, Lord, that you would work in their hearts right now and help them see that. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. This is your time of response. As Brother Steve comes up here and leads us in our response hymn, I want to encourage you to respond how the Lord is leading. If He's leading you to come before Him and cry out at the altar, look, that's been the theme of our Songs of Summer series this year. Come before Him and cry out in your desperation. If you have never trusted in Jesus before, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? You cannot do this on your own. You can keep trying. If you like, it will fail. Trust in Jesus, the Word of God, today. And find revival, find fear, find love in our God. Maybe you need to talk to someone about baptism, membership, leading in this church, spiritual gifts. I'll be down front. We've got a prayer room in the back, or you can hop in the chat if you're online. However you need to respond, this is your moment. Don't let it pass by. I want to thank y'all for joining us this morning. Let's give Brother Steve a round of applause. Just thankful that he came and led us in worship today. We'll be back here tonight at 6 o'clock for a prayer meeting. Uh, remember, be sure to grab your spiritual gift uh, survey before you leave. If not, we will hunt you down. I have a list of all your names. We will come and knock it. So go ahead and beat us to the punch. Please grab that if you've not done it yet today out at the info desk. Jonathan Gaffney will be out there to help you with that. Um, and be sure that you've got everything you need uh, to do it. Uh, we're also, remember, we're launching right now media this week. So if you want to get signed up for that, be sure to fill out your email address. Drop that in the offering boxes on the way out the door uh, or send it to us online. Somehow, someway this week, get us your email address. That way we can get you signed up. Uh, as soon as possible. We want to make sure that this is utilized by our church body as much as we possibly can. And so uh, if you need help setting it up, holler at us. We will help you get that figured out. Uh, Brother Rowan, will you come and pray to close us out today?